The story of 343 Industries' declined or perceived end is deeply entwined with the journey of the Halo franchise, which the studio inherited from Bungie after Bungie split from Microsoft in 2007. 343 was established to manage and develop the Halo universe moving forward. The studio had some successes and missteps with its trajectory, ultimate leading to significant internal changes and doubts about its future as the sole caretaker of the Halo franchise. Hello everyone, my name's Holotide, and today I want to talk about the rise and fall of 343 Industries and take a look at Halo's struggles over the past few years. Remember, if you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel, I could be your third favorite Halo YouTuber. All you have to do is hit subscribe. The channel is trying to hit 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I think that is very much possible. This is going to be a pretty in-depth video, so without further ado, let's get into it. As I said before, 343 Industries was founded in 2007 and named after the character 343 Guilty Spark from Halo CE. Some would say this is a tad ironic, given that character's motivations in the game. In real life, 343's mission was clear. Continue the legacy of one of the most iconic franchises in gaming. Bungie was parting ways with Microsoft and had retained ownership of their next franchise, Destiny, while Microsoft retained the Halo IP. By the time that Halo Reach was in development, Bungie had already announced its plans to split from Microsoft and become an independent studio, moving on to work on its new franchise, Destiny. Microsoft then created 343 Industries to oversee the future of Halo after Bungie's departure. So Reach marked the final Halo game that Bungie would fully develop. During this period, 343 was more focused on learning the ropes of the franchise and preparing to take the reins for the future. They did play a supporting role in the development of Reach, and once Reach was released in 2010, 343 became more directly involved in supporting the game post-launch. This included managing updates, community engagement, playlist, and just maintaining the game's online services. The goal was to help ensure that Reach was going to remain active and supported post-launch. I believe that I also read that 343 was responsible for the No Bloom and No Sprint playlist, which I think everybody can agree was probably the right direction for that game. Now let's move on to the post-Bungie era. The negative reception of 343's Halo games stem from a combination of factors, many of which revolve around fan expectations, changes in gameplay, and the studio's struggle to live up to the high standards set by Bungie. The studio's first significant release was Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary in 2011, which was a well-received game although many, myself included, would argue the visual upgrades that were made to the anniversary graphics were an actual downgrade that took away from the atmosphere and aesthetic the original game had. The real test, however, came with Halo 4 in 2012. This was going to be the first major Halo game developed solely by 343 Industries. We're going to use terms like commercial success throughout this video, and I know that some of you would like to argue that point, and I understand why. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But technically, Halo 4 was a commercial success, and was actually praised for its narrative direction for the campaign and emotional depth, particularly in exploring the relationship between Master Chief and Cortana. However, there were signs of fan discontent, specifically with the game's multiplayer. It had adopted more elements from more common first-person shooter games like Call of Duty, shifting away from the classic Halo formula. Halo Reach did introduce sprint and armor abilities, but those were expanded on in Halo 4, and these mechanics fundamentally change how combat flows within Halo. Many fans felt that these features made Halo feel more like modern shooters like Call of Duty, Titanfall, and moved away from the tactical, slower-paced combat that made the original game special. As you all know, this is still debated today. And while it did not start with 343 and began with Halo Reach, the expansion on these ideas have ultimately caused a division within the fanbase. They also added loadouts and perks. That broke Halo's tradition of having everyone start with the same weapons and abilities, which was always seen as one of the franchise's defining characteristics, Again, kind of starting with Reach. Ultimately, Halo 4 could not keep the population that the previous games had, and while there were elements that were praised, a lot of people do not look fondly back at Halo 4. 
Moving on to 2014, 343 Industries attempted to consolidate the Halo franchise's legacy by releasing Halo, the Master Chief Collection, a compilation of Halo Combat Evolved and the Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, and Halo 4. We know that this was a massive undertaking that promised fans a lot. However, the launch was disastrous and one of the worst in gaming history. Matchmaking was plagued by issues and bugs, performance problems. Multiplayer basically didn't work. This resulted in the tarnishing of the studio's reputation even more as fans expressed frustration over how 343 handled such an important release. Despite numerous patches and years of improvements that turned MCC into a much more polished product, that launch is still remembered across the gaming landscape. It can't be understated how often I see people compare gaming launches such as Concord to the MCC launch. And while there was a golden age for the MCC, especially when it came to the PC platform, it feels as though 343 has been ill-equipped to keep up with updating it and ensuring there are not any hacking problems or cheating. Hopefully as time goes on and 343 builds itself back up, the Master Chief Collection will receive more updates and more content. We now come to Halo 5 Guardians. Released in 2015, it was met with mixed reception. Again, the game was praised for its fast-paced competitive multiplayer, but the campaign drew a lot of criticism for its convoluted story and the lack of focus on the Master Chief. Although I am old enough to remember that Halo 2 received the same sort of backlash when introducing the Arbiter as a playable character in the campaign, fortunately, that has grown into a great pivot and has introduced a beloved character to the fan base. That is not so with Halo 5. Despite marketing showing the game as a showdown between Spartan Locke and Master Chief, Chief is only playable in 3 out of 15 missions. The story has been widely criticized for being overly complex and difficult to follow, especially for those who don't read any of the novels or partake in any of the other media. Fans felt disconnected from the plot, which included multiple factions and new characters without context. Also, for the first time in the franchise's history, Halo 5 removed split-screen co-op, a staple of the series that had been crucial to its multiplayer and campaign experiences. Many would argue that this alienated a significant portion of the Halo fanbase, many of whom have fond memories of playing the previous games with friends on the couch. Although its multiplayer has been praised, it is extremely divisive amongst Halo fans. Other issues are the art style changes, weapon and sound design, and just an overall narrative shift in the story. This include narratives talking about the Forerunners, AI, deeper political conflicts, and so on. This is just a side note. I actually had to triple check that the Master Chief was only playable in three out of the 15 missions for Halo 5. I read that and I was just like, I there's no way. And I had to go back to Google and I it's kind of insane to me. Anyways, after Halo 5, we would get Halo Infinite, the most recent game from 343. Infinite was announced in 2018 and was a spiritual reboot of the franchise. It was intended to restore the series to its roots while embracing modern gaming standards. It seemed as though the studio was reacting to the criticisms of Halo 5, and they were promising a more classic Halo experience with an open world structure, a narrative focus on Master Chief, and the return of split-screen co-op. The original release was set for late 2020 as a launch title for the Xbox Series X. Unfortunately, the game was delayed after its gameplay reveal in July 2020 after it was widely criticized for lackluster visuals and many other issues. This was the spawn of the infamous Craig meme where a poorly rendered brute became symbolic of the game's perceived unfinished state. This delay pushed Halo Infinite's launch to December 2021. When it finally released, it received praise for its multiplayer, which was launched as a free-to-play component. And it did deliver on its promise that Master Chief would be at the forefront of the campaign. However, despite that initial success, the game was hindered by a series of post-launch issues. Content updates were slow, key features like Forge and Campaign Co-op were delayed, and technical problems persisted. The fan base was growing frustrated with the lack of communication from 343. 
If I were to just talk about the issues of Halo Infinite's development and post-launch support, it would be a whole entire new video. So we're gonna keep it to a minimum, and I'm sure you all know most of the facts. While Halo Infinite had the potential to rejuvenate the franchise, its post-launch struggles added to the perception that 343 Industries was not capable of managing the franchise effectively. As Infinite struggled to maintain any type of momentum, Many rumors and leaks about the studio and its internal issues began to surface. The game's development had been turbulent, with numerous leadership changes, a switch to a new game engine, as well as the pandemic affecting production. This has led to Microsoft announcing widespread layoffs across several of its gaming divisions, and 343 was hit particularly hard. After that, key leadership figures, including Bonnie Ross, the founder and head of 343, stepped down, and the studio saw significant reduction in its workforce. This only fueled fan speculation about the future of the studio and who would be handling the Halo franchise. More rumors came out that said 343 would shift away from developing Halo titles, instead focusing on managing the franchise while outsourcing future games to external studios. During this time, the future of 343 Industries remained uncertain. They reassured fans that they would continue to be involved in Halo's future and creating games, but many were left questioning whether 343 Industries was the right steward for the franchise. Many believed that Microsoft would start to look at other studios to take a more significant role in the development of future Halo games. To many fans, 343 never fully escaped the shadow of Bungie, and to some, they never will. Many had called for the firing of 343 to bring an end to the studio, and recently, we've gotten that. But the end of 343 Industries does not mean the complete dissolution of the studio. At the 2024 Halo World Championship, 343 Industries rebranded itself as Halo Studios. Alongside this name change, they announced a ship from the proprietary Slipspace engine to Unreal Engine 5 for future Halo projects, to which they are working on multiple. This move aims to address long-standing technical issues and rejuvenate the series. At the World Championships, they showed off a project codenamed Foundry, and while not a game itself, it was a test for the new studio to flex their muscles with Unreal Engine 5. They also had the head of the studio, Pierre, on the stage signaling a fresh approach to game development. It has been a long and winding road for 343 Industries, now Halo Studios. With the missteps and failures of the previous Halo games and even the Halo TV show, they were forced into a position of change, something that fans have been asking for for years. Some fans are excited for this change, others are skeptical and waiting, and others simply do not believe that this will change anything and that it is just a rebrand. It's too early to tell, but I, like many others, will be excited for whatever Halo game comes next, and will certainly give it a try. As someone who loves the Halo franchise, and has played it since they were a child, it holds a very special place in my heart that no other game has ever been able to touch. I truly hope that the new studio, the new leadership, the new employees, and the new direction will ultimately deliver us a Halo game worthy of being compared to Bungie's. That's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and I will catch you around the ring. Peace!